Welcome to the Soccer Tavern, where we're discussing the history, culture, and philosophy of the beautiful game. My name is Dave, and in this series of videos, we're discussing the history of soccer clubs from around the world. Next up, Burnley Football Club. Pull up a seat, and let's start the discussion. Burnley FC is located in the eastern part of the town of Burnley. Burnley is located in the northwestern part of England in the United Kingdom. Burnley currently play in the Premier League and their home ground is called Turf Moor, which opened in 1883 and holds 22,546 people. Burnley Football Club can trace its roots back to the 1870s when there were rugby clubs playing in the area of Burnley, but they officially switched to the rules of soccer in 1882. The story is that management for Burnley Rovers met at the Bull Hotel on May 18, 1882. At this meeting, management voted to change from playing under the rugby rules to playing under the FA rules, which were, and still are, the rules of soccer. In the report from the meeting, the proposal for change was proposed by a man named Harry Bradshaw, and their proposal obviously passed, otherwise I wouldn't be here telling you about them right now. The main driver for the change was not sporting related, but rather was motivated by monetary incentives. The club had run a deficit in the prior year, and management thought that there were more financial opportunities in the world of soccer. By that summer, the Rovers' name was dropped, and they became Burnley Football Club. They then moved into Turf Moor in the spring of 1883, and they've been there ever since. Burnley FC is nicknamed the Clarets. This nickname refers to the club's colors of claret and blue. The club didn't always play in claret and blue, however. They changed colors a handful of times in their early years, but switched to claret and blue in 1911 to try to emulate Aston Villa, who were one of the most successful clubs at the time. They've played in claret and blue ever since, hence the nickname. The club has been using their current crest since 2010. At the top of the crest is a stork, which is a reference to the Starkey family, who were a prominent family in the Burnley area. In the stork's beak, it is holding the DeLacy knot, which is the badge of the DeLacy family, who were the ruling family in the Burnley area dating back to medieval times. The stork is standing on a hill surrounded by cotton plants, which was the main industry for the town of Burnley. The hand represents the town motto of hold to the truth. The bees on either side of the hand reference the town's hardworking attitude and derive from the saying, busy as a bee. The bees are also a subtle nod to Turf Moor's old end of the ground, which was nicknamed the Bee Hole. The weird, wavy looking arrow in the middle of the crest represents the local river Brune. The lion in the bottom middle of the shield represents royalty, as Burnley were the first club to have someone from the monarchy visit their ground. This happened in 1886 when Prince Albert attended the first half of their match against Bolton. The ribbon at the bottom, which now says Burnley Football Club, used to have a Latin saying, which I will now butcher the pronunciation of, Pratimque et causa laboris. This translates as the prize and the cause of our labors. Man, those Latin lessons I should have taken in high school will be coming in pretty handy during these videos. Now I'd like to talk about five important events in the club's history. First up, Burnley was one of the founding members of the Football League on April 17, 1888 at the Royal Hotel in Manchester. This league laid the foundations for what eventually became the English Football Pyramid and would evolve into the Premier League about a century later. The second event I'd like to discuss happened on April 25, 1914. On this date, Burnley won their first and only FA Cup trophy, beating Liverpool 1-0 in the final. Burnley's goal was scored by Bert Freeman, whose father traveled 13,000 miles from Australia to be there, watch his son score the goal, and win the cup for Burnley. That must have been one hell of a trip for that dad. In addition to Burnley winning the cup that year, the final was significant for two other reasons. The first, it was the first time the current reigning monarch of England attended. At the time, it was King George V. It was also the last FA Cup final before World War I put all soccer on hold in England for a few years. The third event I'd like to discuss is not a specific date, but it happened in the 1920-1921 season when Burnley won their first top flight title. During the season, the club had a 30-match unbeaten streak in the league. That was an English record until the Arsenal Invincibles squad in the early 2000s broke that record. The fourth event, and second to last, I'd like to discuss happened on July 25th, 1955, when Burnley opened Gawthorpe Training Grounds. The facility was the brainchild of then-manager Alan Brown. His concept was to have a training ground away from the stadium where players could properly train and young players could be developed. 
It was one of the first facilities of its kind and provided the blueprint for the way modern clubs still operate today. It was very progressive thinking from Burnley. And finally, the fifth and final event I'd like to discuss happened on May 9th, 1987. Burnley was in the fourth division and was in danger of being relegated out of the Football League, meaning they would become a semi-professional team, largely seen as a death sentence to fully professional clubs. The club needed to beat Leighton Orient on this day. If Burnley lost the match, they would have been the first of the 12 founding clubs to fall out of the Football League. That was obviously something they wanted to avoid. They were able to scrap together a 2-1 victory to remain in the Football League and began their rise up the divisions back to the Premier League where they are today. There's no official supporters group nickname or anything like that for Burnley fans. They mostly just go by the nickname of the Clarets. Something interesting, though, is that Burnley's most famous fan is Prince Charles, current heir to the British throne. Now let's talk about some of Burnley's most noteworthy players. First up is Jimmy McElroy, who is widely regarded as the greatest player in the club's history. He made almost 500 appearances for the club between 1950 and 1963 and scored 131 goals. He also won a first division title in 1960 and was widely regarded as a world-class player during his time at Burnley. Next up is Jimmy Adamson, who was captain of that 1960 First Division title winning squad. He spent his entire 17-year playing career with Burnley and then went on to manage the club for six seasons after he retired. While those first two are legends at Burnley, the next two are famous players more so for their time spent elsewhere. Next up is Paul Gascoigne, who is famous for his on-field performances mainly early in his career, but by the time he joined Burnley in the latter part of his career, he just wasn't the same player. Still, he is very famous throughout England, not really for his time spent at Burnley, but does deserve mention here due to his immense fame. The last player I'd like to mention is Ian Wright. He played for Burnley in the last half of his final season in 2000. Wright was and still is one of the most prolific goal scorers in the English national team and Arsenal's entire history. Now let's discuss some of Burnley's most noteworthy managers. First up is John Howarth, who was manager of the club from July 1910 to December 1924. He was instrumental in changing the club's colors to claret and blue. He also led Burnley out of the old second division and won the FA Cup in addition to their first first division title. He was the manager that oversaw Burnley's record 30 match unbeaten run. He unfortunately contracted pneumonia and passed away while still manager of Burnley in December 1924. The next manager I'd like to mention is Alan Brown, who we've already spoken a little bit about. Brown was only in charge of Burnley for three seasons from 1954 to 1957, but he was instrumental in getting that Gawthorpe training ground built and was adamant about youth development rather than buying players. He established Burnley as a great defensive squad and went on to many other managerial jobs throughout England. Many managers cite Alan Brown as an influence for their careers, including Brian Clough. It's also worth pointing out that current Burnley manager Sean Dyche has been making a name for himself as a great defensive tactician. He is leading Burnley to great things given their small budget and relatively small profile when compared to most of the other big Premier League clubs, so definitely keep an eye on him. Burnley's biggest and most passionate rivalry is with nearby East Lancashire neighbors, Blackburn Rovers. Both clubs were founding members of the Football League in 1888, and only eight miles separates the two towns. There were a handful of incidents over the course of about 80 years, but the rivalry was by most accounts pretty tame until the 1970s. With the rise of hooliganism in the 1970s and the proximity between the two towns, the rivalry turned violent. It was also aided by the two towns sharing the same rail line. The violence isn't quite as prevalent these days, but the animosity between the two sets of fans can still be felt. Given the distance between the towns, almost 130 years of playing against each other, and the hooligan history, this makes for quite an intense rivalry. Time to talk about some stats and records as of February 2018 when I am recording this video. Burnley have spent 55 seasons in the top flight in their history. The club has three major trophies, including one FA Cup and two First Division titles. The club's record first team appearance holder is Jerry Dawson with 522 appearances. The club's record goal scorer is George Beale with 187 goals. The club's record transfer purchase was Chris Wood from Leeds United on August 21, 2017 for about £15 million. 
And the club's record transfer sale was Michael Keane to Everton FC on July 3rd, 2017 for about 26 million pounds. And one last interesting fact for you about Burnley FC, the club is one of only three clubs to have won all four fully professional division titles in the English Football League pyramid. So there you have it, a bit of history on Burnley Football Club. Let's continue the discussion in the comment section below the video. Thanks for stopping by the Soccer Tavern. Hope to see you again soon. Cheers. Cheers.